Ne Allah. I call the uh, committee of the whole to order. Are there any declarations of pecuniary interest with respect to the items listed on the agenda? Okay. Before we deal with the um, corporate services report legal 2013-14, uh, um, are there any members that would wish to have the benefit of legal advice? And if so, I would ask that we go into a closed session to receive that legal advice, and then we can deal with the report following that information. Is anybody wish, wishing to have the benefit of legal advice? Okay, then let's go forward with respect to the uh, report number 2013-14, uh, and that's with respect to the Marianaville developments update and appeals. We do have some, the uh, report is seeking some direction from staff, and I'll entertain any motions. Councillor Emanuel. I'd move a motion to receive uh, the uh, the report uh, for information purposes, and that the matter uh, be uh, referred uh, to uh, a January special council meeting uh, for discussion. And I'll speak to it uh, after there's a seconder. Okay. Is there a seconder for that motion to receive this report and refer the matter to? A special council meeting in January. Seconder, Councillor Twinney. Councillor Manuel, to speak yeah. to the motion? Just briefly, and, and I actually, uh, I think we'd benefit from some comments from staff as well. Uh, uh, having attended the uh, uh, board meeting, and I know uh, many of you did as well, uh, but uh, one thing I think is important, uh, uh, I just don't think it'd be appropriate that council makes a decision on this matter today, uh, one way or another, uh, with uh, having just made a decision two weeks ago um, public, uh, if we were to ratify this tonight, I just uh, I think it, it would be a mistake. I think uh, we rightly sh should get some more information. I know that the GPA has expressed to me that they intend uh, to make a deputation on this matter, indicate uh, uh, their uh, position, uh, and I think uh, uh, those decisions are, are rightly made, I think, with a bit more time. This is a very short time frame, uh, and in staff's defense, uh, the board uh, <coughs> adjudicator uh, uh, I think uh, express a desire to see uh, council uh, take a, uh, or at least give consideration uh, to taking a position, uh, which uh, our solicitor indicates in her report. But uh, uh, so, as the mover, I'll speak to that, and then uh, uh, if I have questions of staff, maybe if I, I was going to ask that uh, Esther maybe walk us through the process, uh, what we'd be looking at in a mediation. Uh, I understand, for instance, all parties have to be agreeable uh, to go into mediation. If that kind of high-level uh, uh, commentary could be provided by uh, our solicitor, I think, would be helpful as well. Thank you. Okay. As a seconder, Councillor Twinney? Oh. Okay. And if we could hear from uh, our solicitor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, through you, the report uh, basically provides an update following the second pre-hearing conference that was held on December the 10th. And... Um, let you know that uh, the first of all the town was successful in its request for um, consideration of a two-phased hearing um, and that is a, a, a fairly significant outcome of uh, last Tuesday's uh, pre-hearing. The uh, second um, significant thing was uh, as uh, Councillor Emanuel pointed out the OMB chair did uh, direct me to bring to Council's attention that uh, there is an opportunity for mediation and that the Board has facilities and has mediators available if, um, if the town is willing to go that route. So uh, the, the purpose of this report was twofold to um, really bring Council up to date in terms of uh, what took place and also to let you know of um, the OMB direction. Now, in terms of uh, Councillor Emanuel's question and what can be expected at mediation, um, mediation is a completely voluntary process. So even though um, Council has been asked to consider it, uh, 
Uh, there certainly is not, um, uh, council cannot be compelled um, the same as uh, all other parties. They, they cannot be compelled to attend mediation. Uh, for mediation to be successful, all parties would have to agree to participate, first of all. And uh, second of all, um, the parties would have to be clear on the issues that they wish to mediate. So um, at this point, the board has granted a two-phased hearing at uh, the town's request. The first phase will deal with uh, whether development is appropriate for the subject property. Um, and uh, council and uh, the residents group would need to make a determination whether that issue is something that uh, could be mediated or not. And uh, if not, then uh, we need to consider whether it's, uh, whether the timing is appropriate to go on and mediate potentially the second phase, which would be more of the technical issues around the subdivision. So uh, that is certainly one issue that uh, the members will want to consider um, and um, whether maybe it's uh, premature at this point to consider mediating that since we've, or, or this council has just made the request to the board to have a two-phased hearing. Um, other than that, uh, there are no, if, if the town does attend mediation, again, it's a completely voluntary process. Uh, nothing is uh, finalized without uh, all party consent to an agreement, a settlement, and uh, it can be an agreement on some or all of the issues that uh, could possibly be me mediated. So um, certainly parts of, parts of the um, of the appeals could be mediated. There's a potential that maybe some of those things could be agreed upon, but again, it's entirely voluntary. Um, the board does um, the board does expect that if a party is going to mediation, that uh, the representatives will have authority to agree to something. So uh, if there are things that might be agreed to, then council would have to provide staff with those directions prior to going into mediation so that we would be very clear on uh, the things that council might consider settling. Um, other than that, uh, the, the timing, I guess, uh, we've been offered time prior to the uh, the full hearing or the first phase of the full hearing, which is to commence on March the 17th. So the board has indicated that it does have time um, between the beginning of January and March to mediate. And uh, that was another reason for probably the offer to the town that uh, they do have some mediators available at, uh, at the moment. And uh, subject to any questions that you may have arising out of that, that's, uh, that's some of the process around mediation. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Manu. Thank you. Uh, just to further to the timing, uh, the time that I've proposed where, because uh, again, I have a concern about council making a decision today on this matter, uh, with a January uh, special council meeting with that, is that uh, timing uh, sufficient with a decision point that day, no matter which way uh, council directs uh, to prepare for a mediation? Uh, is that an appropriate time frame? Through you, Mr. Mayor, yes, most certainly um, it, it wouldn't be too late. Uh, I mean, the, the town could go to mediation at any time you know, right up until uh, days before the hearing if the board had the time to accommodate it. And uh, certainly um, it might be appropriate to wait until January to make that decision so that uh, there's further opportunity for discussion with the residents group um, regarding uh, the points that uh, could be taken to mediation, the points that might be considered for settlement, if any and uh, a few weeks, uh, a few additional weeks to do that uh, would certainly be appropriate. Now, thank you. The, uh, just to follow up then, just on process then, all parties have to agree 
uh, to participate in mediation. And did I hear correctly that all parties would have to uh, agree on all the issues that would be dealt with, uh, as well as uh, they all would have to sign off on a mediated agreement if it's to be considered an agreement. To, is it? Yes, through you, Mr. Mayor, that's correct. So, so I'm just trying to understand. Say uh, if you initiate, because I suspect uh, mediating, uh, say a matter of say principle, is a challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's pretty black and white in my view. But if all parties went in with the agreement that that's what would at least be discussed, and say a party was not happy uh, with where it was going and they left or they felt that they were going nowhere, the other parties could not continue to discuss the matter, that it would just be mediation would be breaking off. I'm just trying to understand the mm -hmm. process. Yes, through you, Mr. Mayor, that is, that is my understanding that all parties to the, uh, to the appeals would have to also be parties to any mediated agreement. Okay, and my final question, can discussions, comments, uh, or information shared in mediations be used uh, in a full OMB hearing? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, no. Uh, those discussions, uh, part of the mediation is uh, the ability to speak frankly and uh, candidly with the mediator in order to find uh, those positions and find um, if there's any uh, middle ground or any similarities that can bring uh, some of these issues closer together. So typically the parties would uh, sign an agreement um, either prior to or at the time of mediation that um, all of the um, exchanges are confidential and will not be disclosed at the hearing. Thank you. Just to clarify, confidential, and the term we've used before is without prejudice. Is that part of that? So it doesn't prejudice your discussions? Or? Well, this is a, a board, a, a, an Ontario Municipal Board process. So um, it is the board's process and procedure that is confidential, and I think the board would <laughs> acknowledge that and certainly respect that confidentiality because uh, uh, there is, there is a, a good purpose and objective behind mediation, and it does uh, often resolve in... Um, shorter hearings and uh, the settlement of, of certain issues. So yes, it would remain confidential and the board would ensure that it does. Thank you. Councillor DiMuccio. Thank you, Mr. Chancellor, for your um, feedback and uh, advice. I just want to make sure, I want to get something straight. So this is interesting. Mediation, you said something that um, if, if the other party, assuming the other party agrees to the mediation, um, they have to agree to certain parts of, or what it, the criteria under the mediation or the, or the discussions under the mediation. So that's the first part. But you also said that all parties are authorized to agree with something if something is decided. So what does that mean exactly? So if they find a middle ground, you said that all parties are authorized to do something with that. What exactly does that mean? Well, typically at a mediation through you, Mr. Mayor, the uh, party would be represented by their lawyer and there would also be an authorized person um, on behalf of the party itself to uh, say yes or no to something that is suggested as a potential settlement or an area of agreement. Um, with the town, it's a little bit different because uh, council makes the decisions, so it's not practical for um, council to go to mediation, so we would need direction in advance on um, the issues that are intended to go to mediation before we would be authorized to agree or not agree on those issues. So you, let's say, agree to a settlement or an issue, staff does, you bring that back to council and you make that decision, is that correct, is that? Well, I, my understanding is that uh, they, the, the mediators want uh, the authority at the time of the mediation, so it's, it's something where we would almost be looking for authority in advance, knowing what the issues are, to understand what our parameters are at the mediation. Um, typically, we would bring a mediated settlement back. Um, I don't know how accommodating the, uh, the board will be about that, but um, part of their process, and again, it's their process, is... Uh, 
if uh, they're working towards a settlement, it looks like they're getting close to one, they uh, strongly encourage the people attending the mediation to be authorized to sign um, to sign a settlement. So is there any risks then in, go in going to mediation with council's position? Is there any risks of at all? Well, again, it's entirely voluntary. So if okay. council gives direction to go to mediation, I mean, you know, you, you take the opportunity to see if there are any areas uh, that might be resolved. And if they can't, they can't. And there's no penalty for okay. not having done so. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Regional Councillor? Thanks. Is, is your experience that, um, uh, that an OMB chair uh, will typically suggest or offer up a, a, the mediation opportunity in, in most uh, hearings? Or? Um, through you, Mr. Mayor, it's, it's typically the more complicated, uh, lengthy hearings where mediation is offered. So uh, definitely one where we've got the number of issues that we see in this hearing, that would be the type of hearing. Uh, you know, some of the smaller ones where maybe there's just a zoning bylaw amendment or just um, a subdivision um, conditions might not warrant mediation. Thank you. Councillor Twinney. Uh, thank you. Um, so I, so if we, uh, we're going to refer this, so we're not making any decisions now. We're referring this to January. So at that time in January, we can have a full discussion on if we decide to mediate what those issues are and we can, um, as a group, as a council, determine, I guess, what, uh, what course of action we want to direct you with uh, mm -hmm. if we want to go forward. I, I'm assuming then that those, those mediations, they're in a closed session, are they? Like they wouldn't be open to, so like the pre-hearing that we had last week that we all attended, well, the, you know, people were able to attend. It wouldn't be in that sort of a scenario. It would be closed, correct? Right, through you, Mr. Mayor, that's correct. Uh, only the parties are entitled to attend the mediation, so it is not open to the public gener generally. And only the, the representatives for council would be able to attend too. Uh, That's individual correct. council members would not be able to attend. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? So I just, I just in my own mind want to be clear that um, all parties, all parties must agree on a mediated settlement. Is that correct? That's correct. If, and and there, how many parties are there now? Four? Um, there's the municipality, there's Marianneville, uh, York there's, there's the GPA. There are five parties right now, Mr. Parties. Mayor. Yes, uh, the York Street. Region is also a party. Okay, so okay, all right. Uh, and so what happens if three parties agree and two don't? Then, the, the, then we the, can't do it. Okay. So all parties will have to agree. Okay. Any other questions? Regional Councillor? Sorry, yeah, can you just, and, and we don't need to know now, but can you just confirm at some point, though, whether um, what I'm hearing was there's one question asked and the answer has been sort of consistently that all parties must agree to a mediated settlement but that's not necessarily the same as mediation I, so could you if, if you're not sure right now could you check if mediation can still occur with less than five parties to be brought to the others who you know somebody could walk away but eventually agree I guess, I'm just wondering it, it, it's more a curiosity thing but could could mediation continue without everybody in the room because yeah. it's only the settlement that everybody has to agree to right uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, all parties must agree to mediate. So it's both mediate and oh, okay. settle. Right. That's, that's the clarity I'm looking for. Um, a party can agree to mediate but may decide that they're not going to take a position. So that, that could be one possible right. way to participate, is that they will agree to mediation, not take a position, be presented with whatever settlement agreement is is arrived upon and then review it and and determine if they're prepared to sign it right thank you okay Councilor DiMuccio thank you um final question I had um obviously um whenever there's you know issues in mediation does that that affects the costs of of this hearing is that correct through you Mr. Mayor one of the objectives of mediation is to try and reduce um, or eliminate uh, some of the hearing and some of the issues that uh, would otherwise be dealt with at the hearing. So in that sense, um, one of the objectives is to reduce the cost of, um, of going to a full hearing. But if no party can agree to certain 
criteria or whatever, um, then it does increase the cost. Is that correct? Because we're going through that process and then possibly through the process. That's what I'm I, trying to get at. Yes, through you, Mr. Mayor. There, I guess there is the potential that uh, it could add additional days, additional time for the parties if uh, they're not able to arrive at a settlement. Thank you. Uh, do I understand correctly that to, in order to go into mediation, this council would have to provide a mandate to its representatives in terms of what's in and what's out? Uh, and that might be some of our own internal discussions, and that would be an in-camera discussion because it's before a tribunal. Is that correct? That's correct, Mr. Mayor. And again, that is the board's expectation. So it's not normally how this council functions typically. Um, in many cases, staff would negotiate something, an agreement that um, staff can support, would bring that to council for direction. But in this case, um, I'm being told that uh, council would, should provide a mandate in advance of a mediation if, if uh, the direction is to go to mediation. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other, any additional questions? So we have the motion, just to be clear, the motion is to receive the report for information purposes and that the matter be referred to a special council meeting for dis discussion. And I just want to be clear, normally our process would be a special committee, the whole meeting, and I think it's deliberate that we're saying that this should go directly to a council meeting. Councillor Emanuel, just to clarify. Councillor Twinney? Just, okay. Yeah, no, I just wanted to be clear about that because it's just a, a bit of a departure for our normal process. Uh, and, and I agree with it, and I can support that. Councillor Twinney? Why, why would we not go to, uh, to, through you, Mr. Mayor, maybe to the mover, why would we go to a committee of the whole first um, rather than going straight to council, just to clarify? No, no. Mm -hmm. Thirteenth, and the council meeting wouldn't be until the twentieth, so we don't virtually lose all of January. Yeah. So that's yeah. my only. It's, it's, yeah. That's I didn't describe the date today. So if staff yeah. wants to come back and, and suggest that maybe they could tonight, uh, uh, do you think ratify tonight? Can you turn up? So Just perhaps tonight, council uh, staff might make a suggestion on a date and time, and it might be appropriate to us to do a whole council meeting, uh, just seeking a decision point in January. Yeah. Yep. Okay, and my reason for raising it is it's not inconsistent with the way that we had the public meeting in that we said, you know, we had the committee of the whole and then we had a council meeting to ratify it in order to, to go forward with the issues and, and recognize the, the time constraints. So going directly to a council meeting or a council meeting and then subsequently ratifying it with a special council meeting, I think is going through the same process twice if time is urgent. Uh, so I could I could support going to a council meeting uh, myself, but regional councillor. Yeah, I, th I think with, with uh, getting some some options back from staff tonight or recommendation from staff would be helpful. I um, cognizant the time, but if we, I guess what I'm suggesting is perhaps if the if the special council meeting were only a couple of days after the first committee of the whole, and I think that's kind of what council manual suggesting one possibility because I'm and I guess I'm just weighing in for my, myself personally. I'd like to keep it moving, but would also love the opportunity to have two thought points on this because we really, although we're saying we're dealing with it today, we really aren't dealing with much today. We didn't get into the meat of the matter and to have time to reflect and think it through and have that, what we refer to as that sober second thought opportunity would be valuable, but maybe that's the way is just to bring it closer to the community whole. Okay, then um, should we make an amendment to that motion? Because the motion is directing it to a council meeting. We're in seconder. What the process might be. Okay. Does that work for you, Mr. Sheldon? Yeah. Is that, uh, in terms of scheduling? Okay. 
see that as a friendly amendment? Yep. Okay. Okay, now, are we revising that resolution? Or? Special I, I counsel. Captured it, but don't, don't be concerned about it. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor? Any opposed? That is carried. Good. To the, and then uh, we were agreed that this not is not uh, it's not necessary to have a closed session. So a motion to adjourn would be appropriate. Councilor Demucho, seconded by Councilor Twinney. All those in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Yeah, well, no, that's good. It gives you a chance to right. Any more clothes there? Any more clothes there?